The president and other proponents of big government have declared the auto bailout a success. Are they right? My name is Jenna Hewn and I'm here to narrate this Economics 101 video from the Center for Freedom and Prosperity, where we'll look at the facts surrounding the auto bailouts and show that it has been a failure for both taxpayers and the economy. First, let's briefly discuss how we got here. In late 2008, Detroit automakers began a PR campaign to secure a government bailout, arguing that they were too big to fail. Even though firms in other sectors disappear all the time with very limited fallout, the auto executives and union bosses claimed that if just one of them went down, the entire industry would collapse. Congress was less convinced, but when they balked, President Bush decided he didn't need something as quaint as legal authority and offered over $13 billion in combined loans to GM and Chrysler from the remaining TARP funds. President Obama, drawing on his vast business experience gained while working as a community organizer, law lecturer, and politician, then took control of the process and dumped even more money into the industry. The firms emerged with taxpayers owning 10% of Chrysler and 60% of GM. Now the White House is telling us the bailouts worked, largely with no evidence other than the fact that companies are still operating. Here are the four reasons why they're wrong. Number one, the taxpayers got fleeced. In August, Treasury estimated that taxpayers will lose $25 billion, which is a 15% increase over the last quarter's estimate. The government still holds 500 million shares of GM stock, and we need to sell them for about $53 each to recover the entire GM portion of the bailout. But with GM currently valued at less than half of that, it's not likely to happen. In an unusual move, the company has also given special permission from the Treasury to carry forward $12 billion in tax losses from its pre-bankruptcy days, which is typically prohibited. So we can add that to the taxpayers tab. Number two, President Obama gave favors to union supporters. Ignoring the principles of bankruptcy law, the administration protected and rewarded political allies in the United Auto Workers Union. The U.S. Bankruptcy Code allows companies to improve competitiveness by renegotiating union contracts to competitive rates. But that did not happen, and GM still has higher costs than its competitors. Instead, the administration heavily favored the UAW over other creditors. Rather than treating similarly situated creditors equally, as bankruptcy law demands, the administration helped the UAW recover most of their claims, while other creditors got mere fractions or nothing at all. GM even used $1 billion in bailout funds to top off the pensions of UAW retirees at Delphi, a bankrupt former part subsidiary. GM had no legal obligation to do this, and non-union retirees got no similar handout. In total, the handouts to the UAW cost $27 billion of the total $80 billion taxpayers put on the line. The lesson here is that politicians will make decisions for political reasons, which is why you don't want them having power to pick winners and losers. Which leads to the next problem. Number three. When government picks winners and losers, we all lose. By stepping into the process, government not only unfairly aided the UAW, but also distorted the marketplace as a whole. For instance, GM's decision to malinvest billions of reduction of the plug-in hybrid volt does not appear to be based on market considerations and has so far caused the company to lose tens of thousands for each model sold, though it does fit with the president's campaign promise. But political demand is not what determines profitability. Because of government distortions, GM focused on making certain kinds of cars over others, which had an impact all the way down the supply chain, aiding some firms while harming others. This naturally creates waste in our system, as resources are spent making cars that people don't want instead of ones they do. Politicians understand how to get elected, but they don't understand how to make cars people want. They should leave the automaking to the automakers. Number four, the costs are unseen. The president and the media focus on the fact that GM is still open today and claim that they saved jobs by bailing out the auto industry. Well, surely they saved some particular jobs, but that's much different than saving aggregate jobs. The money used to bail out GM and the auto workers union had to come from somewhere else. In this case, it was first taken out of the private sector through taxes and borrowing, funneled through the government by bureaucrats paid for by some of those same dollars, and finally it was given up to GM, a company that had already proven incapable of using its resources efficiently. The net effect this has on the economy is negative. There are fewer dollars left in the private sector, meaning less capital is available for starting a new business or expanding on an old one. 
and what money is returned to the private sector is going to a company that has already proven to be inefficient. Furthermore, if GM had gone through standard bankruptcy to slim down or even liquidate, other more profitable automakers would have been able to gain market share or add some of GM's best engineers or workers. They thus paid a cost for this bailout. And then there are the costs created by introducing moral hazards. A previous CFNP video explained moral hazard and why it is bad. But the main thing to consider and to understand is that when government bails out one company, it sends a signal that poor performance and excessive risk taking will be rewarded with taxpayer dollars. To summarize, it's no surprise that an influx of taxpayer money and political manipulation of the bankruptcy processes can keep a company's doors open, at least in the short run, but it's bad for the economy and in the long run, most likely bad for the company too. I'm Jenna Hune. Thanks for watching this Economics 101 video from the Center for Freedom and Prosperity. Please share it widely.